Good morning, Sunday School. Good morning. Uh, it's a blessing again to be here this morning. We thank God for this precious opportunity uh, to stand before you here and for those of you who are viewing by way of Facebook and all other uh, media outlets. We are excited this morning about today's lesson and even more so we're excited about the person that's going to stand in our stead and teach us on this morning. Beautiful wife, Amen. Sister Janice Jackson. Amen. 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 Good morning, good morning, good morning to the morning, Sunday school and to those that are in Facebook land. We just thank God for Amen. another chance, for another opportunity to come into his presence. For every time we get into his presence, our lives change. Amen. And so I'm grateful to be here this morning. I honor my pastor whom I just saw, my first lady, amen, and all those Galileans. Good morning. I miss y'all. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. Father, we magnify you. God, we lift you up. God, you are the exalted one. You are the holy one, God. You are the great I am. You are the old ancient of days. You are the risen Lord. And it's such an honor and such a privilege to be able to bow in your presence this morning, oh God. But in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, pleasures evermore. God, every time we turn around, God, you keep on doing great things for us, oh God. So we come back, oh God. Oh, God, it's that one leper to tell you thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your patience. Oh, God, and the list can go on and on because you've been just that good. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. You've been just that good to us. And so we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to study your word. We want to be like David, oh God. Thine word have we hid in our heart that we might not sin against thee, oh God. So God, take us deeper. Take us higher in you, oh God. Shed us a flesh, oh God, and let your spirit, oh God, manifest in us, oh God. That you, oh God, will be glorified in the end, oh God. And we will say, oh God, that it was God that did it and not we ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we give you praise, God. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This morning. Yeah. <sighs> it's a tough one, as the old folks say. It's a tough one. <laughs> Love for your enemies. Uh, I think the uh, subtopic is uh, 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 not, not having your own self-interest. Not, not looking at your own self-interest. Well, let me make a disclaimer before we start. You know, when you get in an airplane, after the airplane goes up so many feet, um, you can get up there and the weather kind of gets a little shaky. You, uh -huh. you, they say it's turbulent. We have some turbulent uh, weather. So this lesson is kind of parallel to that. This is some turbulent weather. So put on our seatbelt. Because yeah. it's going to be a little shaky. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, and at some time or the other, you know, the oxygen uh, little mass might have to deploy because we might lose a little oxygen. Yeah. Uh, but because every time you go higher, yeah. oxygen level goes lower. Yeah. And so, uh, but we don't have to worry about it because we got a great, great pilot. Oh, he's yeah. a great pilot. Yes, he is. And he's going to make sure we land safely. Amen. Amen. But it's not going to be without our stuff getting shook up. <laughs> Amen. It's not going to be without us coming out of here without any bruises. Because this lesson right here, this is a, a bruiser. Yes. This, if you don't get bruised by this lesson right here, hmm. then you might need to evaluate your own spiritual well-being. Amen. It's a lesson for everybody because this is a struggled area for most Christians. It's an area for most people, but especially Christians, yeah. love for enemies. Mm -hmm. Our key verse says, I say unto you which hear, mm. I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, my God. Bless mm -hmm. them that curse you, deep, my mm. goodness, and pray for them which despitefully use you. Now, that's a deep statement all yes, by right. itself. Yes, now, we, we can sit right there. That's, that's verse 27. Listen, Jesus uh, is now uh, 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 talking to the disciples, really, and talking to the crowd of people. Let me give you
you a little background because we kind of just jumped into chapter 27, I mean chapter 6, and jumped right into verse 27. It's good to know what's happening before and after. And we also need to know who is this, this person that's, that's writing this book. We know Luke to be a physician. But what's so, so wonderful about Luke is that Luke was not a Jew. Luke was not an eyewitness to Jesus Christ. So how did he get all this information? Luke was a compadre of, of, of Paul. He, he was a sojourner with Paul. So he walked and he did some things and he saw how Paul interacted. He heard the messages that Paul was, and he became converted himself. So that, for Luke is actually a Gentile. Yeah, Luke is yeah. not a Jew. Mm -hmm. So who else have a better idea of how folks are mistreated than somebody that was mistreated? Mm -hmm. uh, even though he was a physician, he knew what it felt like to be rejected and mishandled and misused and, and cast aside. And, and, and as a body of Christ, all of us have had, some, in some realm or the other, one of those things or some of those things to happen. You've been ridiculed, you've been rejected, you've been misused, you've been mishandled. Uh, Luke writes to us through this gospel message to tell us how we're supposed to handle the bad situations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How we're supposed to handle the folk that don't treat us right. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, how are we supposed to look and interact when men do different things. Now let's look at the audience. The audience here is, uh, the, we got the Pharisees and the Sadducees, we got uh, the poor, but most of all we got the disciples. Now uh, the, the, the uh, lesson culminates like this, uh, it begins off, now Luke writes um, to um, a man, Theophilus. This book is written to a man, it's not written to an audience, it's written to a man. Why Theophilus? Because Theophilus too was a converted Gentile. And you know, when 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 you come into something brand new, you got some good expectations of how things supposed to get. You know how you first got to church and everything was hunky dory, you had a zeal for Christ, and then somebody said something. Yeah. <laughs> Your dress too short. Uh -huh. You ain't supposed to wear. Take, take that off. You ain't supposed to wear. Somebody comes in and busts your bubble. You was all the way up on Mountain High. Yes, you was on Mount Zion. They put you down in bad and low. So we have to be careful how we interact. That's what the scripture is saying. Don't let folks bust your bubble. Yes. Don't let folks steal your praise. Don't let folks denounce who God say you are. Mm -hmm. But teacher, you, you have no, come go ahead. So Luke is now writing to the Theophilus so Luke can know how to handle mm -hmm. what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And so now uh, chapter 6 goes in like this. Jesus begins to heal on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. This is so odd to me because how is it that we get to a place in the church we're so concerned about religion that we're not concerned about a man? Amen. So Jesus is in the synagogue uh, and here comes this man with this will in hand and Jesus said, be healed. Oh, you would have thought everybody would rejoice. Be healed. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, when we come to church, don't you expect healing? Yeah. I mean, what are we coming for? Yeah. But instead of uh, the rejoicing, he gets ridiculed. Uh -huh. It's the Sabbath. Uh -huh. You ain't supposed to be healing on the Sabbath. Now, aren't you glad Jesus don't choose a day to heal us? Amen. I need him every day. Yes, I need him every second. Yeah. Every hour. He don't, he don't pick a day to heal you, mm -hmm. or pick a day to fix you, or pick a day to save you. He's available all the time. Mm -hmm. But the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the church, had a problem. What I love about Jesus, I was, I, 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 I'm kind of prone to believe that Jesus came, really came to pick a fight. Uh, because if you go back through the scripture, you remember Jesus healed the lame man on the Sabbath day, yeah, right? Yeah. And he told the lame man, pick up your bed yeah. and, walk. and walk. Now, he could have just healed the lame man uh -huh. and told the man to go on by his way. Nobody never would have known. They would say, oh, that's the healed man. Uh -huh. But no, he had his bed up on top of his head. <laughs> Everybody saw this bed. You're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. Uh -huh. So Jesus purposely set it up so everybody can see that this man had been healed on the Sabbath to let people know that he, God created the 
the Sabbath for man. Uh -huh. Not the man for the Sabbath. Amen. And Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Yeah. So he can do what he wants to do Amen. on his own day. Uh -huh. And so here we get another picture of him healing a wounded man. Then the scripture goes on to talk about other miracles that he did. He healed the multitude and he did all kinds of things. And then, then he uh, got to the disciples uh, and he began to name the 12 disciples, even the one that would betray him. And so after he had named the disciples, now we're coming to our scripture today where uh, he brings them down and puts, sits them down. Now this lesson is uh, a tie-in to uh, Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes. Some say this is different because he's, he was on a plateau or on a plane. But uh, most theologians say Jesus came down off the mountain onto a level place to begin to teach. Yeah. Not that this was a whole different scenario from the Beatitudes, because the Beatitudes started with blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. But, Je but uh, Jesus starts, this lesson starts at another point in the Beatitudes. Mm -hmm. So Luke chapter 27 said, but I say unto you, which here, now y'all jump in whenever y'all want to jump in. Love your enemies, yes. <laughs> Do good to them which hate you, come, so I got to keep going. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. Now, to me, that's like being on a car, and I'm driving along. For, for the, I'm, I'm driving along, and then all of a sudden, somebody put on their brakes real fast. You got to go, you know, okay, now you have you up on this mountain telling me uh, to love one another, to do, you know, but then you tell me to bless those that hate me and pray for those that persecute me and treat me bad. That's a whole other plan. Now, let's identify the enemy, though, because the scripture made this enemy enemies. So let's identify. The enemy. Who is an enemy? Who is an enemy? Uh, Sister Bernard. So you, you said, you said, prayer makes a difference, you know. Prayer and makes a difference. If, you, if this person is an enemy, then pray for them. Okay. If this person is an enemy, pray for them. Anybody else? You know what? <laughs> I know what the scripture said. <laughs> but you really got to know God. To do this, pray for your enemies. Yes. Huh? <laughs> they don't talk about you, curse you out, and now you're gonna pray for them. Mistreat you. Yeah. Uh, and and but then it takes us into he moves them from a natural level to a supernatural level. Yeah. See, because in a natural, uh, for Jim, it's time to fight. In the natural, that, it, it's time to cuss, swear, and fight. Okay, yeah, yeah. but in the supernatural, Jesus Pray. is telling us, Pray. "Oh, you gotta handle it differently. Right. You can't be like them, and, and and you can't be like us and then act like them. Mm -hmm. You got to handle yourself differently. Yeah. I'm gonna show you how to interact with them, Virginia. Uh -huh. From the inside out. Inside out, an inward change, making an outward change. Yeah. And so this is the problem with the church today. We are so uh. uh external that people can't see the internal Christ. We have so much arguing and bickering and fighting in the church. I'm not talking about Galilee. I'm talking about the global church. Yeah. That's all you hear about people falling out. People have fallen out in the pandemic. Y'all yeah. might not believe me, but we ain't even near each other. That's right. And folks have fell out. Yeah. <laughs> Why can't the church get along? Because we have an enemy or some enemies. Mm -hmm. Because prayer makes a difference, and you have that just pray, but be sincere. That's where the difference gonna come in. This prayer makes the difference—a sincere prayer. My Lord, my teacher. The you you hear the first verse says, uh, "I say to you who what hear, hear." That word "hear" denote he who has hear. not just the ear. But he who understands yeah. and he who has uh, is willing to apply mm -hmm. what he has heard. Yeah. Because like you said, the Lord requires something totally different than what we naturally would do. Mm -hmm. 
because you said naturally it's tit for tat, mm -hmm. but spiritually we are to take the abuse mm -hmm. and go on and, as Sister Burns said, and pray fear. that God will change their heart. Mm -hmm. And that's where the turbulence comes in because it's hard yeah. to pray for somebody who has done you wrong. If you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Yeah. But what the scriptures say, scriptures say, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, and I will re repay. We know the scripture. Yeah. However, <laughs> old folks, you say, don't make the old me come out. <laughs> and because I'm in the flesh, or because I am flesh, I'm human, it will come out sometime. But we have to be uh, studious about what we hear and how we apply what we hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and hearing, hearing comes in many facets. Because I've, I've heard some stuff, but I've not heard it. Yeah. I've, I've listened to some things, and I've not remembered. Yeah. But then I have really, really concentrated on some things, and I got it. Mm -hmm. Because hearing comes with concentration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is telling them to focus on what he's saying. He that have an ear, that's over in Revelation chapter 3. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. You cannot hear without the Spirit. That's right. And so he's teaching them now, I want you to move from your natural hearing to your spiritual hearing. Because naturally we would reject it like we are now. You're not going to slap me and get away with it, Rashad. Mm -hmm. You're just not. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, if one slap your cheek, you turn the other cheek. Who? <laughs> well, where they do that at? <laughs> That's not natural. That's right. But he's saying in the spirit. Yeah. yeah. You got inside out. Yeah. There's got to be a change in you Amen. to know who you're wrestling against. That's why the enemy. Listen yeah. to what Ephesians chapter six says: We wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities and powers and all sorts of what spiritual wickedness yeah. and yeah. what high places. places so when you realize who you are fighting then you know how to win the war yeah. I, I, i'm gonna stop right there when you realize who you're fighting then you know how to win when you recognize the enemy then you know how to fight the enemy with the word of god through prayer and through supplication. Listen, just because uh, uh, David Jackson might get on my nerves and say something to me that he should not say, I recognize that that's not Brother Jackson uh -huh. or Deacon Jackson. We're supposed to know each other like that in the body of Christ to know that when I'm out of sort, that's not me. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy using me. Yeah. That becomes the enemy. So the enemy manifests itself in several different ways. Uh -huh. The enemy manifests itself in rejection. The enemy manifests itself in jealousy, in hatred, in bigotry. And guess what he really, really does? Separation. Yeah. The enemy likes to classify. <laughs> yeah. The world classify, right? Mm -hmm. Rich class, middle class, what? Mm -hmm. Poor class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guess what we do in the church? Classify. Classify. Yeah. And when we classify, that's a loophole for the enemy to come in and start destroying. Because mm -hmm. see, one person ain't no better than the other person. Yeah. Jesus here talks to a multitude of people, but guess, guess what the multitude is? Poor folk. Yeah. It's some folk broke. Yeah. <laughs> it's some folks that don't have anything. That's what he's going to start teaching. He's going to use this example as a way to teach them how you treat people. It's not about your status. It's about whether or not you can hear what the voice of the, the Lord is saying. If you can hear, that makes you rich. Uh -huh. If you can hear what God says, you already surface way above everybody else because now you know how to win. Amen. Who wouldn't want to be on a winning team? Amen. If you can hear what God is saying to you, whether you're black, white, rich, poor, uh, Jew, Gentile, if you can hear what he's saying, that hey, that's a better place. That's more hope. I came to help you. If you can hear the message, then that raises you up and elevates you above the head of the enemy. Listen, he says, 
But I say, but always mean that something else was before that. Yeah, yeah. He says, but I, I, I know what you see. I know what have been taught. I know how you've interacted, but this is the way you're supposed to do it. Let me tell you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees was messed up. Theologically, they were messed up because they could not hear that Jesus was the Christ. They could not understand how Mary's boy that they saw in uh, uh, the human form was the son of the living God. They were messed up theolog theologically because we try to make sense out of a natural thing or a supernatural thing. Yeah. So now uh, uh, the church has become an enemy. That's bad. And then it said, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you again. This is an enemy. And verse 29 says, and unto them that smited thee on one cheek, offer also another, uh, the other, and him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat, their coat also. Listen, he says, go an extra mile. When somebody uh, do something bad to you, and then a lot of people think you got ulterior motives, D. <laughs> when you treat them nice and they know you, they know they messed you up. Yeah, yeah. They know they ridiculed you. They know they talked about you. They know they, they did some bad things. Uh -huh. But then you come and say, can I take you to the grocery store? Yeah. Then they're like, what you want from me? <laughs> yeah. they, they, they like, no, you, you trying to kill me. I know what you're trying to do. But they don't understand how the, the body of Christ is supposed to interact with people that mistreat us. Jesus says, if, if, you, if they take one cloak, you give them another. Right. Let them know that what they took is not greater than what you have. Because mm -hmm. every time they take something from you, oh, gosh, every time they take something from you, God give you something else. Yeah. Every time they try to steal your peace, God raise you up above the head of the enemy. Steal your joy, God makes you happy. Yeah. You know, so there's nothing that the enemy can take that God don't ultimately replace in double. Yeah. Okay, so when they take it, Give it to them. Yeah. Don't be mad. Give it to them. Yeah. And tell them, if you need something else, just let me know. That's deep right there. Yeah. Yeah. Madam teacher, uh, along with that, we have to understand, uh, Luke says that the Lord was teaching his disciples uh, because of what they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had seen them do. And he said, well, now listen. Do you remember what David did when David was hungry? He went in the temple and he ate the showbread, which was unlawful to do for only the priests mm -hmm. to do it. But David took the showbread, ate it, and gave some to his followers. Yeah. He says, now, I'm, and that's where you said that he taught that the Sabbath was not created for uh, man, but man for the Sabbath, and that the Lord is the Lord of the Sabbath, which means he uh, is greater than the Sabbath, and he can do what he wants. David was greater than uh, his situation because he was king, mm -hmm. so he could do what he, he needed to do. Mm -hmm. And that's why we don't get in the church. That's why you can easily say that the church has become an enemy to the insiders. Now, we know the church is in here. Not, we ain't talking about the building. Yeah. We treat each other wrong. Yeah. That's who becomes the enemy. We become our own enemy. Absolutely. And that's why we need the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we need him every day because in the umbrella of flesh, we're going to have this struggle all the time if we don't uh, allow the Lord to lead, guide, and direct us. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you know what? We're not going to always agree. Th right. this, is, this is the thing in church. We think everybody's supposed to see it our way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not one way because we are a diverse number of people. We all have different gifts. We have different callings. He said it like that to build up and to edify the church. And because my idea might not be like your idea, it doesn't mean that my idea is wrong That's or right, your idea right, is right. wrong. It means that we need to sit down and think this thing through and let's see how we can work this plan together. Yeah. Uh, God is always orchestrating things in his church. It ain't ours. It's his church. He's always setting things up in the church, and he uses little old folk like us, messed up people like us, 
to do it. The, uh, the misunderstanding or the misconception is when I get to church, uh, everybody in the church is right and saved. That's the mis <laughs> misconception. Yeah. Uh, everybody in the church ain't right and ain't saved. That's right. People come to church for various reasons because mm -hmm. the church is a building mm -hmm. that they come to, but the church is not mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. from the inside out. That's when we become the church. Yeah. And unfortunately, the enemy knows how to pick out the one to send the weakling to yeah. to uh, uh, make uh, the, the frailties of the church big, mm -hmm. uh, the flaws of the church big. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they ain't right, she ain't right, the pastor ain't right, the deacons ain't right, the church ain't right, the praise team ain't right. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody right in the church. I ain't going back. That's an enemy. Yeah. yeah. And we need to identify who the enemy is. The enemy is not a person. Mm -hmm. The enemy is a spirit yes. that manifests in several different ways. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. We want to get that absolutely plain. Sister Byrne. I'm going to the introduction of the second paragraph. It says that Jesus pointed out in his collection of teaching that position, which is number one, money, number two, and authority, number three, are not as important as what is in one's heart in faithful obedience to God. In Luke's narrative, Jesus has completed the Beatitudes and the parable woes and turned to the way Christ followers ought to conduct themselves in a hostile world. How to conduct yourself in a hostile world? This is a hostile world. Mm -hmm. We got a hostile election <laughs> coming up. Now look. <laughs> Pray. Amen. Pray. We're in some hostile Sincere. situations, and guess what? People are hostile. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful as to how we pray, this next election can erupt some things mm -hmm. that can cause mm -hmm. havoc on the entire right. world. Oh, yeah. So we got to know our position in the body of Christ. The Bible said, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Now, just because folk do you wrong, God you says, that's not a reason for you not to love them. Right. Because right. people mistreat you, you got to continue to love. Mm -hmm. When I tell you that's not an easy thing to do, but it is a right thing to do, and you got to make sure you're in the right line with God so that you can do it, you need a helper, you need a comforter, you need a king, mm -hmm. you need a savior, you need a redeemer, you need Jehovah Jireh, you need Jehovah Nisi, so you need each other alone. You need every part of him that you can get to pass that situation. Yeah. Because yeah. it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Anybody that tell you it is, not tell the truth. Or they have not been the victim of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say this one thing. The yeah. church hurt is the worst kind of hurt. Now, mm -hmm. you think about family. You think about friends, and you think about church. Those are bring three places that you can get hurt the worst. Oh, yeah. Family, friends, and church. But I think with family, and you can almost forgive your family because, you know, yeah. most of them don't have it right. You know, they, we say they ain't got them all, you know. Mm -hmm. My daddy say um, they're trying to not go all the way around the track, <laughs> you know. So uh, uh, we can kind of get over, we can look over their flaw. Uh, with a friend, you can say, I figured out that you're not my friend, so I'm just going to let you be. Mm -hmm. When they come to the church, there's a whole different kind of hurt because your expectation is right. different from yeah. the church than it is your family, than it is your friend, because Christ is supposed to live here. Yeah. Christ is supposed to be in you, and you're supposed to exemplify Christ. Amen. So there's a different mandate on the church, the mm -hmm. body of Christ, than it mm -hmm. is for the other parties. Yeah. The, I, I see... And when you were speaking about uh, this election that's coming up, we have to understand that the land that we live in, and when I say land, I mean the whole world is sick mm -hmm. and it's in trouble. Not just the election, mm -hmm. but there is an answer because God said, if my people mm -hmm. who are called, which is, uh, which is us, mm -hmm. if my people which are called by, by my name mm -hmm. will humble yeah. themselves right. and pray, and seek my face, which turn. the church is not doing, turn. and turn from their wicked, wicked ways, turn. then I will hear from yeah. heaven. Forgive there that word again, hear. Yeah. I will hear from God, mm -hmm. and I will Forgive heal 
their yeah. lane. Yeah. But we got to pray. I uh, said, see, uh, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availed much. But he has got to pray with an understanding of what's going on. Not yeah. just the election. Yes, it's messed up. Yeah. But there's more to it than just this coming election. Yeah, now how awesome would it be? This is, I'm just going to put it out on Facebook land. Maybe somebody can do it. I, I don't know. How awesome would it be for us as a unified collective body to grab hand to hand or arm to arm in the corona, however you want to do it, and begin to pray for this upcoming election before mm -hmm. the election get here. I'm talking yes. about beyond denominations, beyond anything that man has set to divide the church, because denomination is a church divider, it's a it's a body of Christ divider. You better than me. We dance better than y'all, and we teach better than y'all. We don't believe in Sunday school. We believe in Sunday school. It is a, a enemy. So how, how awesome would it be if all of us, every church, there's Grace Covenant, there's Brian Chapel, there's St. James, there's Ebenezer, Mount Zion. No, no telling how many more. Noble Chapel. How? Noble Chapel. How awesome would it be? We all in the same community, right? Mm -hmm. But we all belong to the same church. Let me say, because me and Sister Byrne were just talking about that. We all belong to the same church, and we all fellowship in the same arena. How awesome would it be? we got enough people now to circle this entire block and begin to pray. That's pray right. for our neighborhood. Pray for our children. Pray for our nation. Pray for our White House. But you know what? We're so busy in our own selves that we don't take the time to do what we, we're really supposed to be doing. And like Sister Byrne said, pray. But the one about safe distance in the corona thing, this is the first thing, time somebody, I mean, light. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Give me yeah. six feet. That don't keep me from praying. See, that's, a, that's another divide. That's right. The enemy figured if I can keep them out of church, then they won't do what they're supposed to do. And so we got to be smarter. We do everything else. Right? We go to uh, my, my job has started coming. People have started going back to my job. I don't know about yours, Rashad, or anybody else's, but they started going back. It's funny. And so what, Corona? <laughs> you know? Give them the six feet, put on a man, and do your job. Yeah. You know? But in the church, we scared. Mm -hmm. They said, don't come to church. They said, we got to be on our job because the enemy is killing mm -hmm. and, and destroying the works of God are trying to anyway. He can never do it, but he's trying to and making us fearful and making us doubt and making us scared to even come up in contact with one another. That's the enemy, and we got to get rid of that fear. I'm moving on because mm -hmm. our time is, is far spent. You were going to say something? Yeah, we, we, we need to pray. I agree. We need to pray. Ask God to give us strength to go to the phone. You know, we just shouldn't pray and don't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? What, you know what else? What? Let's pray and make, make action. Have some ballots available so that people can see the ballots. You know what I'm saying? We've got to be proactive. Let me tell you, yeah, people yeah. have come up with all kinds of Zoom. Uh -huh. We have school on Zoom. We have meetings on Zoom. We do all kinds of things. The church has got to become more creative. We sit in our own little corners and we say, well, we're going to try to do it this way. It's the same way. If you keep doing the same thing the same way, you're going to get the same results. we got to come out of these four walls. That's why God keep the four walls from under us. You can't is. come in. Yeah. Get out and find out how to make this thing work. Find out how to impact the world. Find out how to make a global difference. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and so we got to be on our, we got to be about our father's business. Oh, yeah. So let me go on. So, uh, so and, and then I come back to you, Miss Byrne. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he says, if, if somebody take your cloak, give them uh, oh, give them another one. Um, that was also a picture of the cross. You remember at, at the cross, you know, they was throwing lots for Jesus' cloak. He said, You can have it because I ain't gonna need it because I got another one. Uh -huh. Every time you take something. God, give it back to you, though. He said, you can have, you can cast my score. That ain't mine, because I got another crown over in glory. You know, I got a, I got another robe over in glory. I'm just waiting till I get over there on the other side. I'm moving on. I yeah. stop right there. Give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods 
ask them not again. Don't go back and ask them, uh, give me what I gave you. Let them keep what they have. Uh, and listen, Jesus did that and showed that through uh, the cross. We can see the images of the cross. Every time they took something, every time they did something, Jesus took another stand. He kept high. I think it was Michelle Obama said, uh, you, you go higher. Don't stoop down to where they are. Right. You go higher. Yeah. So Jesus said, don't do what they do. Go higher. Yeah. Look up. Look above your head of the enemy. And as ye would that men should do to you, you do to them likewise. Now, it doesn't mean that if they if they hurt you, you hurt them. Right. No, you do the opposite of what they do to you. Yeah. The Bible said it's like heaping coals of fire on their head. It's also another picture of the cross when Jesus was on the cross and they kept poking at him. Poking at him, poking at him, poking at him. And he said, I ain't saying nothing. Do what you got to do. Uh -huh. I'm good. I'm moving on. I'm, I'm tying all these verses in together. Uh -huh. But if you love them which love you, what do you do? What, what thanks do you get? <laughs> the sons know how to do it. And then he goes on to say, if you do good to them that can only do good back to you, you just like the other folk. Mm -hmm. And if you lend to them that can only give you your money back, you're just like the other folk. Sinners know how to be good to one another. That's right. But you, that's what he says in verse 35, the proverbial purpose here. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. That's and your right. reward it, shall be great. When you help somebody that can't help themselves, when you do for somebody that can't give it back to you, that's when your greatest reward is. And you shall be the children of the most highest. And for he shall... Uh, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is mercy. And I leave you with this. Uh, I know our time is gone. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We got to get our love walk together. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians verse 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men mm. and of angels, yeah. but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clinging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains, but if I don't have love, I don't have nothing. I don't have nothing. Amen. Here's the key point. We got to love. We got to learn how to love one another and look beyond follies. Mm -hmm. See the need. Meet the need. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Jackson, for such a profound uh, lesson. We pray that you have been blessed by what you have heard, and we pray that you would uh, study even the more now, knowing that there is a great reward awaiting you, uh, not necessarily here in the earth realm, but understand that God has a purpose in all that he does. Mm -hmm. He do nothing without a purpose. That's why he said in scripture that before one dot or tittle of my word should fail, I will destroy both heaven and earth. My word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish all that I purpose in it. Yes, yes. What is that purpose? And that is to show love to him who uh, show evil to you. Watch this, and I, I, I love that point uh, she brought out about uh, Jesus uh, perhaps just came to start a fight. <laughs> because watch this. The law has asked us to do something difficult that he knew was difficult for us because he created us. But he promised us that he would never leave us. Therefore, if we seek him first, mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, sir. That that we are trying to do, we can do it. We can't say, no, I can't, I, 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 I can't love him. <laughs> no. He slapped, slapped me? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, hey, I'm from the hood. <laughs> no, that's not the answer. You are not from the hood. You are supposed to be in Christ. Uh -huh. Whether you was from the hood or not. If Christ is not in you, you show sure enough from the hood. But if Christ is in you, then you can do what the Lord has instructed us to do. Amen. 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 We thank you. We thank you, Sister Jackson, for a very beautiful lesson. And we pray 
that all of you on Facebook and YouTube and all the other media uh, would uh, continue to study the word. There is a blessing. Oh no. Hear what the Lord is saying. Study. Paul says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Yeah. Not to man. Don't do it because Deacon Jackson said do it. Mm -hmm. Do it because the Lord has instructed us to do it. Yeah. And great will be your reward. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so very much. Amen. I'd like to say that two people from my hometown, which passed, uh,